Welcome to Infectious Disease Lesson 1.4, What is an Infectious Agent? Part 2, What Viruses Do to Make Us Sick. The goals of this lesson are to convey the size differences between viruses, bacteria, and eukaryotic cells, and introduce viral structures and the roles they play in infection. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to describe the relative sizes of viruses and bacteria compared to a eukaryotic host cell. Name viral structures and describe their functions in viral infection, and describe the viral life cycle. We will achieve these goals using a web-based activity that demonstrates the size differences between microbes, performing calculations related to microbe size, learning about viral structures and their functions with a lecture and discussion, and watching a video about the viral life cycle. To prepare for this lesson, you'll need to review the following key scientific concepts. Viral structures have specific functions in viral replication and infection, and the viral life cycle is composed of four main steps, attachment, entry, hijacking, and exit. You can review this scientific content in the background reading provided for you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of the lesson structure. And the student workbook provides additional explanation for students. Note that there is also an annotated version of the student workbook available for teachers. Be sure to print the lesson worksheet and the homework worksheet. This lesson also requires access to the internet during the Do Now and a video clip of the viral life cycle, which is embedded in the PowerPoint slide deck. You'll want to confirm that it plays properly on your computer before using it in class. The key point of the Do Now is that viruses, bacteria, and eukaryotic cells have vastly different sizes. We'll get there using interactive websites and calculations. The Do Now begins by having students explore the vast differences in sizes between viruses, bacteria, and eukaryotic cells using two interactive web-based tools. You will need the internet to access these sites. This can be done as a demonstration for the class or by students working in groups. The Cells Alive How Big simulation allows students to zoom in and out on eukaryotic cells, bacteria, and viruses, which gives an appreciation for their relative size. The Scale of the Universe simulation again allows students to zoom in and out, but in this case, the largest object for comparison is the universe. You'll want to confirm that the web tools work properly on your computer before using them in class. After working with the simulations, we review the sizes of viruses, bacteria, and eukaryotic cells with a short lecture. The key points of the discussion are that viral structures play a role in viral replication and infection, and how viruses enter and leave cells depends on the type of virus. We'll get there with the lecture and discussion. To begin the discussion, we will introduce three important viral structures from the inside out. These are the genome, the capsid, and the envelope. Unlike eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, viral genomes can be either DNA or RNA. The virus genome is much smaller because viruses use host cell proteins to replicate, so they don't need to carry the information to encode them. All viruses have a capsid that encapsulates the genome to protect it. The capsid also contains a few proteins that the virus will need to start replicating in a host cell. Some viruses also have an envelope outside the capsid. The envelope is made of the membrane the virus captures from its host as it exits the host cell. Because of this, it can camouflage the virus from the host immune response. All viruses have a similar life cycle that has four phases, attachment, entry, hijacking, and exit. The way these phases happen depends on whether the virus is naked or enveloped. First, viruses attach to specific entry receptors on host cells. Viruses then enter the cell in two main ways determined by whether they are naked or enveloped. 
The viruses then spill their genome into the host cell and use host cell proteins to replicate all the viral structures and the viral DNA. Finally, the viral structures gather together to form new viruses which exit the host cell. Again, how viruses exit cells occurs in two main ways, depending on whether they are naked or enveloped. There are two animated slides that describe this process. Be sure to review the details of this process before class. In the wrap-up, we review viral structures and their roles in viral replication. When watching the video, be sure to emphasize the key viral structures and how they relate to the viral life cycle. The key point of the lesson's homework is that there are some structural features that are unique to bacteria and viruses, and some that are shared by both. We'll get there using the homework worksheet. Students will assign bacterial and viral structures to a Venn diagram. One of the most common challenges students have is comprehending just how small and numerous microbes are. Take your time with the computer models in the lesson that exemplify the relative sizes of microbes. At the end of the lesson, collect the lesson worksheets to assess each student's descriptions of the viral life cycle. The viral structures covered in this lesson will be used when we learn about specific pathogens in Units 2 through 4. Don't forget if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSE team members and we'll be happy to help you.